Hello, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the to our webinar. Let's wait one minute more for the other attendees to join, and then we'll officially start uh, the the first the first webinar. Okay, perfect. I think now we can officially start. So first I'll introduce myself. I'm Isabella Zrazinska and I'm a senior project manager at Funding Box. Uh, I'll be guiding you through this series of webinars that we organized for the Digital Innovation Hubs. As you know, the main goal, uh, well, Funding Box is involved in the many uh, artificial intelligence related projects that include also funding. So our goal through this series of webinars is to give you the insights about the funding uh, opportunities and support that you could provide to your SMEs in your regions, but also to get to know you a little bit more better, to, to understand your needs and problems that we could actually also overcome to bring the AI adoption to, uh, to in Europe. So this is the first uh, from our series of free webinars. So thank you for joining us today. We will focus today on the uh, on the alternative source of funding, that is the cascade funding opportunities that we'll explain to you later on. And um, just to start, we will pass through the mechanism, through the cascade funding mechanism. Maite Caracedo will explain you a little bit more about this. Uh, then we'll tell you about the current um, funding opportunities available uh, for the for the SMEs, but also for the technology providers and for the regions. Then uh, we'll also explain you, we want to give you also the, um, the real examples. That is why we have invited speakers that will explain you a little bit more on how SMEs and how your region can actually um, advent, take the advantage from the AI adoption from the technological perspective and we'll also tell you how such a technological support in our programs is defined. We have also invited one of the beneficiaries from, uh, from the previous project that will tell you um, how such a programs and such a funding can improve the SME's uh, business perspective, so how, how they can improve on that part. And then, of course, we couldn't miss the Digital Innovation Hub representative that can help you a little bit more on how such a collaboration and cascade funding works um, in practice. And at the end, we'll have a time for questions and answers. So here's just a summary uh, about the speakers. Um, so first, I wanted to introduce you to, to Maite Caracedo, which is the co-founder and the business development manager at Funding Box. And her professional background is focused on the funding and innovation, on international projects coordination. She was involved in initiatives like the DIGNET community, that is also a key for the DIG, uh, for the DIG program. And uh, she's holding several managing positions in Funding Box, and she will lead this, um, this first webinar, and she'll introduce the speaker later on uh, at, the, at the start. Some house rules. Uh, for the webinars, so you're you're all now automatically muted, but of course you're more than welcome to write in the chat box. Okay, if you have uh, any technical problems, you can write to Innovations Webinar. This is the username for the technical for the technical problems. Um, you, it would be very nice if you could include your names and surnames, so actually we can also see who you are. And also at the end of the session, we'll have the Q&A part uh, that will be led also by Maite. So please write your questions in the chat box and we'll read them loud at the end and we'll, we'll ask the speakers to, to answer them. Uh, please try to be short and, and direct with your questions. Uh, and also uh, to everyone, uh, we have also informed at the beginning in the registration form that this webinar is recorded. And uh, before we start, I already wanted to invite you to the second webinar. Okay, this will be the continuation. So today we'll make the introduction to the Cascade Founding, but during the second webinar, uh, we'll give you some tips. Uh, Graciela 
Um, Graciela from Panning Box will also give you more uh, insights on how to write the winning proposal and how to help your SMEs in that. Okay, so we already invite you to, to register, but of course, um, first we'll start with uh, today's session. So, uh, with no further delay, I will pass the voice to Maite. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you, Isa. Good morning, everybody. I will now start with the first part of this uh, webinar. I'm going to start sharing my screen, so I will not insist on who I am. Thank you, Isa, for that nice presentation. So first of all, I would like to introduce you what the Cascade funding uh, means, okay? And I will also cover what is the interest that we see for digital innovation hubs and also for those candidate uh, edits, okay? Maybe before starting, I think it's worth to, to mention some, uh, some words about our company, Funding Box. Uh, funding Box, we are a digital platform that is supporting innovators with access to funding and access to tech communities. We represent today one of the biggest deep tech communities uh, in Europe. And by doing this, we also curate our ecosystem and we connect this with corporates or other entities that are looking for those champions in, in our community. In order to a little bit explain that in detail, when we say that we are distributing funding is that through our platform, those innovators can have access to public funding opportunities. Most of it is the cascade funding we are going to present today, but also to some private opportunities coming for, from our own VC, but also from some other organizations like Real Madrid Football Club or some big associations that really launch their challenges for looking for those champions in our community. And when we say that those entrepreneurs can have access to tech communities is because we have a huge ecosystem represented by different stakeholders that are registered in our platform or collaborating with us. These are some figures. I think the most important and relevant is maybe the number of innovators that we have registered in our community and also the number of digital innovation hubs that are active there. And the different technology areas that we cover are ranging from AI to circular economy. And maybe to finalize this uh, short introduction about funding box to mention that the best way for you to join with those stakeholders and with other companies like yours, other innovators, is to join a specific tech communities. And for the topic of today, I really encourage you to join the artificial intelligence community at, at funding box. So let's go for the for the topic of the session. So in my part, I will introduce this mechanism that is called cascade funding and also financial support to third parties, which basically means that this public funding that is coming from the European Commission goes to third parties, either SMEs, startups or other intermediary players like digital innovation hubs, competence centers or universities, but mostly to SMEs and startups through intermediary bodies and those intermediary bodies are the European projects. Those are international projects okay, that are distributing this funding outside the consortium in a cascade mode. This is the, why the, the name is coming from, from there. So um, this funding is coming mostly uh, from Horizon Europe. It used to come from Horizon 2020, not only, okay, because it was to such a successful mechanism that now really is being adopted by also other mechanisms. But still, you know, most of the, the amounts are, are concentrated there. And of course, this is following a competitive process. We are talking here about, about public funding, okay, that needs to be launched and, and this kind of competitive process needs to be followed. But the way it's organized is different because when you apply and when you sign an agreement, you are not working directly with the European Commission. So the, all those financial validation aspects and legal aspects, okay, are not really with the Commission directly, but with the, par the partner responsible for distributing the cascade funding. This is why the process is made a little bit more, more simple. And the final goal here is to select those beneficiaries, okay, in order to 
either to experiment with a technology that is being developed or is being gathered or improved within the project. Okay, we are talking here, for instance, about a traditional SME that want to start its uh, digital transformation journey and they want to test a robotic solution, right? So through this cascade funding, they will go through a pilot where they will have the opportunity to test the solution. But we also have other type of targets that are, for instance, the startups, okay, that want to evolve the product that they have using the, the technology that is being enabled in the in the framework of, of the project. So with those kind of companies, what we do is that we support them to scale up, okay, with this uh, project evolution and other kind of supporting uh, services. The final result of all this is that we are able to integrate more companies in this kind of international projects that otherwise for them is, is very difficult, right? And most of you might know how difficult it is to apply to those Horizon uh, projects. And with this kind of mechanism, it's really more, more easy. And indeed, you know, right, this is one of the main benefits that for companies, it is much more simple to apply to Cascade funding. Why? because the application process is faster. Normally, we are talking here about an application form of between five and 10 pages, where you will need to define, of course, how you will make use of the technology that is uh, in the project, uh, the business opportunities, the budget. Well, of course, we will ask you some key questions, but it will be much more simple than applying to an ICT proposal, okay? And as I was explaining before, the justification, the compliance part on how you saw the way you were expanding those uh, funding is also much more easier. And in many cases, you just need to fulfill some milestones and you will be paid after fulfilling every milestone. You will not need to send uh, invoices or justifications to the, to the partner responsible, at least uh, for being paid. Of course, you might receive an audit in the future, but anyway, in the moment of execution and receiving the funding is going everything much more more fast but also of course right one of the most important benefits is to give the companies the possibility to test before invest right this is really how we facilitate the adoption of those technologies by by the companies and we prepared all the setup for those companies to test uh, to test these technologies but if you ask me where we see, according to our conversations with companies, the biggest benefit of this cascade funding, to us, it goes always beyond the funding itself, okay? And normally this is because these funding opportunities are always part of a whole program where we support the company in the adoption or the testing of that technology with a set of supporting measures that go beyond. And those measures are covering, uh, of course, the technical support I was mentioning, because it's not just that we, we have the technology and the company does the pilot. These companies, they receive the technical support of competence center, excellence competence center from all around Europe that will be there working with them and showing how to make use of that technology. But we also give them business mentoring. We support those companies also, right, in the case of a, of a startup, okay, on how to sell that product to an investor and how to scale the company or how to look for other funding opportunities that will support the company in the full deployment of, of that technology after the, poil, the pilot, okay. We also give them access to private funding, okay, and, and most of all, and this is normally very important for the companies, we introduce those companies in an international atmosphere, in an international uh, ecosystem by the connection with the partners in the projects, but also by the participation of international events that is really offering them a unique opportunity for internationalization of those companies. And I can tell you that when we talk to them, this is the part that they really, at the end of the process, they appreciate the most. This is why, and thinking on the topic of our webinar today, right, on how digital innovation hubs can make use of these cascade funding opportunities, in some cases for them as an entity, because some of those cascade funding are really uh, having as beneficial as digital innovation hubs, but I can tell you that that is not the, the case in most of the, of the open calls. 
but for you to be in an intermediary, right? For you to make use of these cascade funding opportunities for your companies to benefit for, for them. And if we look at the concept of a digital innovation hub or the whole concept of a European digital innovation hub, we will see, right, that access to funding or support to find investment is covered, right? We are identifying funding opportunities for our companies here with this mechanism. We are facilitating the test before invest through these pilots they, they will run within these projects. But we are also offering them access to skills and trainings because in these cascade funding programs, they, they will always have the support, this technical, this business, but in many cases, there is always, always a specific training programs for the workforce or for the owners in the pilots where we will teach them, we will show them how to make a proper use of that technology. So this part is also covered. And of course, innovation ecosystem and networking, especially looking at that European approach, okay, that we are also expecting for a, for a DIH, but especially for a European DIH, is facilitated by this cascade funding. So really, we, we as a cascade funding programs are acting as digital innovation hubs on our own. So this is really a, a, an important opportunity for you to make use of them in order to help you to accomplish your, your main services. And now to finalize my part, just to mention, right, where you can find more information about these funding opportunities. So at Funding Box, we are collecting all those opportunities in a collection uh, where you can join and you can also find more information, webinars, articles, uh, and so on. And in order to also facilitate this for you, we every month produce a newsletter on the funding opportunities that are open in that moment. Because it's true that it's not always very easy to, to find the, the right topic for your right subject so it's very important that you you keep trying okay because maybe in the first month you will not see the scope of a call that is really adapted to you or to the companies that you are supporting but it might come in the next month okay so to really follow these opportunities and to stay attentive to them it is really important so we really recommend you to join our webpage or to go to the commission uh, participant portal and to and to follow them and with this, I will I will finish my my part. Of course, you can you can always contact me. But I think that now is very important that you know more about some of these opportunities. And for this, I will give the the floor to my colleague uh, Isabella Zasinska, that is working with us, and she is uh, on top of many of our artificial artificial intelligence uh, opportunities. So she will present you some some cases. So Isa, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Perfect. Thank you, Maite, for this introduction. And indeed, let me just uh, launch my presentation and then we can go ahead. Perfect. Sorry, this is not the correct presentation. No. Okay. Perfect. Yes. So um, I'll introduce you now the the, the, the the actual funding opportunities for in the in the AI sector. Uh, I will start from the from from the ICT49 project. I know that if for for those of you that are not directly involved in this AI proposals, ICT49 might not say too much, but it is a very important initiative. Uh, in short, uh, you might know that. Um, Four years ago, European Commission has launched AI for EU project that aimed to create the platform that will actually join all the effort and boost the AI adoption in the Europe. So it was a very important project that has ended this year. And now as the continuation, the ICT49 um, family <laughs> I would call, uh, projects uh, continue this action and these efforts because they will create the different type of layers that will add additional functionalities to AI for EU a platform that is already existing and working and from these projects uh, funding box is involved in three of them uh, and so i will focus today on these ones and also on the funding opportunities of them but of course we invite you also to check uh, the other ones i will tell you uh, i have also one slide about the funding opportunities uh, from their side so starting from the um, from from the summary um well easy apply equity and free funding that was already uh, introduced by Maite, but from this ICT49, you, there are 22 open calls available. 
Uh, in total, there are more than 18 million equity free funding through these open calls available. Usual funding per SME or per consortium is up to 150,000. So, this is uh, under this ICT 49 family, and of course, the connections that was already described. So, I will not go deeper to that. For the Bonsaps project, that is the first one and that I'm actually directly involved in. Um, the Bonsaps project um, is the continuation of the Bonsais uh, project that has created the marketplace um, that aims to create the, um, that the main goal to support the SMEs is to create the series of modular services. So actually the SMEs that does not have the capacities and the, um, the competences of the AI developers and integrator and data scientists can actually come to the platform and use these modular services to easily implement um, the AI solutions into their uh, into their processes and um, sector. So this is in very short, but after me we have uh, Miguel uh, De Prado from from Bonsai uh, Association, so he, he will tell you a bit more about the platform and the support provided. And here I'll just focus on the, our flow um, because I wanted to show you where digital innovation hubs are also um, placed in this project. So as you can see, we start from the innovation. So someone has to define the challenge for the industry that we will focus on. And then through the open calls, we, we look for the AI talents, which are developer data scientists that are actually working on this, solving this solution, so training the models and deploying them to the platform. So you're at the beginning. Okay? Digital innovation hubs, especially for this series of webinars, will help us to define which of these solutions will be the most useful for the end users and for the, for the value chain in your region. So uh, we'll ask you also at the end for the consultation on that. Um, and here you can see we are launching the second, we'll have the second open calls launched uh, this year in the second half that will be dedicated to uh, these low-tech SMEs okay, that we want to support. So they will apply to the second open call. They will tell us about their challenges and they will receive funding to, um, to, enter, uh, to, to spend on the six-month program and to develop the AI solution for their, uh, for their process. And here is, again, where we are looking for this support to actually, as you are close to SMEs, we would like to know and make this consultation um, so you can tell us ac actually which SMEs and what kind of challenges would be the most interesting ones so we can actually prepare uh, with advance. And those SMEs and the 70,000 euro, there's another important element that are AI talents. So these are actually um, already the developers that we have recruited for the first open call and we are also actually constantly looking for, we have this, um, this link this open call or expression of interest, we call it, uh, for the specialists, for the AI experts that can register. And later on during the second open call, they will be the service providers, they will be contracted by these SMEs to develop, to support them with the AI solution development. So AI talents are also a very important key uh, element in our uh, open call. And then of course, we cannot forget about Bonsai's marketplace resources, so, of course, uh, Bonsap's team will provide um, those users, both SMEs and AI talents, all the support needed to implement the solution, to use the resources that are already available to develop these solutions. And our consultation uh, will be focused on the four areas, the robotics, manufacturing, automotive and health. So uh, at the end of, the, um, of this webinar, we'll send you the link to the very short uh, this service report. A uh, service uh, survey, sorry, uh, that will help us to define these challenges. And of course, uh, also we will gather all this information that will be published in the report at the end and will be sent to the participants of these webinars. So we actually also won't go further than just these webinars. We want also to gather the voice of digital innovation hubs and help in the future AI adoption in Europe. And here in short, I already mentioned low-tech SMEs and AI talents, uh, but also I wanted to mention that we are also looking for HPC cloud providers. So if you have this kind of entities within your ecosystem, we also are looking for the providers uh, for that part, uh, and of course to get paid for providing services in our action. So that was about Bonsaps, uh, the first one from the ICT49 project. Uh, the second one is the stairway. 
Um, so the star is also targeting the low-tech SMEs. Okay, so here again, um, as you can see, this is a big focus in all the projects. But the difference is that the, the service layer or the, the additional thing that will be added to AI for you platform uh, is focused on the matchmaking. Okay, different types of matchmaking. I will not enter into the details about that. But basically, the idea is that the AI for you project has already a lot of uh, a big ecosystem and a lot of stakeholder connected to that. So Starware project aims to create the, um, the tool uh, that actually be, will be based on AI that will facilitate the connection between those uh, stakeholders. And uh, the first open call has just closed uh, last month, but there will be a second opportunity uh, starting later this year that will be also um, similar to the, to the bond apps. So it will be focused on the, on the low-tech SMEs. And also uh, here you can see the funding will be 60,000. And again, it will be um, the, what will be provided is the six month support program, business and technical mentoring and the access to the HPC cloud providers. So the scope is quite similar. That is why probably this open call will start after um, the, the bond subs one. But as you can see, a, another opportunity for the low tech SMEs. And the third uh, opportunity or the third project where funding box is involved with uh, is the iEnergy. Okay, so this one is again focused on the SME, but here there is a very specific sector, uh, sector of focus on the energy solutions. Okay, so here the consortium aims to bring the, um, the services and applications for, the, for, for this sector, for this, for this innovation. And the second open call will be launched also later this year, but it will be different than Bone Subs and Starway because um, they will be looking for the consortia or of at least two entities because they have to create the experiments. Okay, so you need the technology provider that will actually bring some innovation and then the user that will um, actually create this experiment, right? So where it will, this will be um, introduced. So uh, there will be up to 100,000 euro per experiment and the support program is a bit longer also because at the end the solution, this energetic uh, related to energy sector will be uh, introduced to the, uh, to the end user environment. And that is for the, the free focus projects where funding box is involved with, but uh, as I mentioned, there are three other projects from ICT49 family like AI for Copernicus, uh, focused on the um, on the space industry and also AI uh, AI plan for EU where they are also uh, are currently having the open call for the uh, solutions related to the planning. Okay, so we also invite you to check AI for EU to discover those opportunities. And of course, this is not the only the big focus of these projects on AI and AI for EU platform, but there are other projects that I just wanted to briefly mention that cover also AI. AI family. So there is the security project where, um, where they are looking for the security related um, solutions. So of course this is not directly AI but there are many AI solutions that could be presented here and the open call is uh, finishing at the end of this month on 26th of April and you can present, well SMEs can present either the prototype or already the demonstration and depending on that uh, the funding might be a bit higher because for the demonstration there's uh, much more technical effort needed uh, and here you can also see the you can find the link on the funding box uh, website but of course important fact here is that uh, we're also looking for the consortia so this is the same idea as in the i energy that i presented before that there has to be the tech provider and the end user then we also have NJ Assure, uh, also connected on the security. This call is constantly open, but there is cut-off date at the end of the June. Uh, and the funding really depends on your proposal and on the needs. So there could be, and it's, this call is actually very open. It's coming from the Next Generation Internet Initiative. Um, and here actually you can submit the uh, research uh, and development activities to create, validate or adopt the technical assurances safeguarding interest, internet trust and privacy. So here again, some of the AI solutions might, uh, might be eligible uh, if they are within the scope of this proposal and also the funding depends on the budget submitted in the, or defined in the proposal and the needs. 
Then we also have um, the initiative led by Funding Box, I4MS, that is focused on digitalization of the manufacturing industry. Here there are many projects that uh, you can see the logos on the both. Um, and there's a lot of funding available, mostly to support the manufacturing development of manufacturing industry. But two of them that I wanted to pay attention to are focused also on AI solutions. These are the kit for SME and AI Regio. And we invite you also to check their, um, their website for, uh, for further information, what they are looking for. Uh, but this is also AI related uh, so solutions, mostly that, that can be adopted to the manufacturing sector. So again, uh, focus on SMEs. And the last one, uh, also AI robotics oriented, uh, Funding Box is participating with the, in the Automatica uh, event that will happen in June. So actually we are responsible for the startup arena and we invite you to also apply for this opportunity that is co-organized with Mesa München, uh, where you can actually win uh, and for the for, and win the booth okay so you can get the visibility uh, in this big event that is connected with uh, that is dedicated not only to the industry but also to startups within the robotics uh, iot and ai so this is another opportunity to get not directly funding but indeed the visibility and network and here is the resume of the open calls. Um, as you can see, plenty of the opportunities and a lot of funding that can help uh, the AI adoption and SMEs uh, in your regions to get funding, get support, and uh, and, and boost uh, the adoption of AI. And all of the opportunities are published uh, in our AI community that was already mentioned by Maite. And um, another, the last opportunity is if you would like to keep being updated about this, uh, these opportunities, because as you can see, the deadlines differ, but, and we also publish the new ones uh, this year, you can become the supportive partner. So with that, we, what we offer is, first of all, to give you the visibility through the, from our uh, project's channels. As we already mentioned, we're also involved in the IFNET community. Uh, also to participate in events, uh, you will receive the open call opportunities that you can actually share with your uh, with your SMEs. And in exchange, we ask for also like cross dissemination of these opportunities. So this is a win win uh, win win situation, win win deal. If you would like to join um, at the end of this uh, of this webinar, we will share with you the link to the DIG survey. So I mentioned it's a very short one, and you just have to mark that you wish to become the supportive partner and we'll contact you then with more details. So that is all from my side. And now I pass to voice uh, to Miguel de Prado from Bonsai's Association, who will tell you a bit more about the technical part uh, and technical advantages that SMEs can get from participating yeah. in this program. Just Thank a kind you. reminder, okay, the questions and answers will be answered at the end, so please include them in the chat and we will cover them at the end of the session. So, yeah, Miguel, please, in, in your part, what we would like to, to see is how you tell us more about these pilots, right? Because um, sometimes when we mention them and maybe we touch them at a high level, and I suppose that these digital innovation hubs that are working with are coming today to our women and they really want to understand, right, how those pilots work. So, yeah, please tell us uh, how was your experience. Maybe it's also important to say about you, right? You are a senior researcher working for the Bones App and the Bone Size Project, right? So thank you for joining us and the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here to try to share a bit the experience on the technological side of the AI. So we'll just share my screen. <clears throat> So these days we talk a lot about AI, right? So I think it's in the news, it's everywhere. Uh, many people put it like sort of a revolution. I wouldn't say it's such a revolution, but sort of an evolution of the tools that we use these days uh, in the industry. So every change comes with a chance. So that's why I like about this slide because it's an opportunity for all the companies, SMEs or even any user to upgrade the tools they have to create new solutions. And I would like to give a little quick overview of what we understand by AI. So artificial intelligence is a system that is able to perform a task that before it was usually performed by a human. 
And when we talk about machine learning, it's because we are uh, leveraging the power of the data. So data these days is something very important because through data, we can understand how the world is represented. So the computers or the some algorithms can, can take the data and understand uh, the intrinsics of it and then make some predictions upon that. And the next step comes deep learning, which is a, a part or a subfield of machine learning. And it's the use of neural networks that uh, sort of represent how our brain works in a much less uh, complexity, of course. And these neural networks are going to adapt the neurons, the weights, so that we can understand how the data is represented and then uh, finally predict some of the tasks that are uh, covered by the artificial intelligence solutions. And usually this is, uh, this is performed through supervised learning. So supervised learning is the strategy that we use in deep learning to learn actually. So for that, we need some label samples. So the idea is that with data, for example, you have an image of a cat, we need to have this label next to it, which says cat, so that the neural network after sample, sample after sample is able to recognize and learn through this specific reinforced uh, label. And how, how, how do we use this? How, how, what's the example of neural networks or artificial intelligence that we have currently in the, in the industry? So we'd like to give an overview of the use cases that we have in the Bonsas projects and also in the stairway, which is on the left is the robotics, uh, manufacturing, automotive and healthcare. But we also have many other fields like for fraud detection, personalization, targeted marketing, content classification, term prediction, customer support. So I would say that most of the innovation has come through the use of a vision. So we have images or videos where we can obtain some information or to use uh, artificial intelligence to get some information. But this is moving very quickly to other domains for audio, signal processing, or any other kind of data that we may have uh, access to. So talking about these different use cases that we work a little bit more in, in, in our uh, BOMSAPS project, in the automotive domain, other than the usual uh, autonomous driving that Tesla, for example, is doing, we are looking a lot into these in-cabin monitoring uh, systems. The idea is that some companies uh, or some manufacturers uh, in this domain of automotive are trying to push the idea of having some security systems inside the car. So we are looking a lot at, at these driver monitoring systems, occupant detection and gesture recognition to increase the safety, security and experience of the drivers and the people inside the car while they are uh, actually in the car. So I would like to show here, we have two videos of actual system that are already in production or uh, will come in the cars very soon. And one of is this equipment detection system. I will just try to make it bigger. So you can see here how we are detecting how the people are seated in the car, who is in the front, which one is the driver, which one is the other occupants, what they are doing, if there's someone is drinking. So all this information is very useful in case of systems for security. We have also this other solution here, which is looking more closely related to the activity of the driver. So we are we are seeing how where the driver is looking at, if he's tiring, tired, sorry, if where the eyes are looking, if they are on, like directed to the road or not, if he's distracted, if he's talking on the phone. So all this information is very useful for the security within the car because some alarms can be triggered in case something is wrong. And going back to the presentation, so we have this sort of different use case within a car for face detection, body, object, identity, gestures and activity. So even though it seems uh, it's an easy task, there are many, many different AI applications or tasks performed at the same time to be able to adapt to all these people. We have other use cases in healthcare for health assessment, patient monitoring, and workflow support, where again we use uh, the same sort of uh, task for face detection, body, object, and gestures. And the idea here is to assess if someone is in pain, so we can detect if someone is suffering, and we can trigger an alarm because maybe this, this person is not able to talk. We also have some, some works on vital signs, mood, or fatigue. 
And moving on to manufacturing, we have uh, here is a different use case. We also have vision, but there is also more related to uh, um, signal processing for um, audio and also like signals from the machines themselves. The idea here is to have some more quality inspection to see if there are some defects in the in the process and also increase the efficiency and the productivity of these systems. And um, in the case of robotics, there is two main blocks that some companies are looking at the moment. One is the collision avoidance. So robots are moving inside the house or outside the house. And then this one key element is that they shouldn't collide with a human or with other objects. So there's a lot of work in these collision avoidance um, processes. And then the other, the other field is mostly the interaction between the human and the robot to be able to communicate and actually tell the robot to do something. So sort of say, uh, this is the four use cases that we are working on and we're experimenting with companies that start creating these solutions already. So just to give you a bit of the overview of what is currently in the market. But we see that IT is the main component that has been in, I'm just sure. Okay. So IT is the main component that has been using AI, uh, at least in the previous years. But we see that AI is democratizing. So it's, it's moving to many, many fields like administrative, customers, marketing, sales, accounting, because every, every tool or every company that they have some data or some, or some specific uh, pointers that can use AI, then probably this, this is a moment where companies can try to upgrade their tools to use AI. And that's the way we use, uh, the way that uh, Isabella was presenting before through the open calls is a nice opportunity to, to uh, start uh, working with these environments. So I would like to talk a little bit. So this is, this is nice. Uh, everyone is using AI, it's cool and actually provides some, some, some nice features. But what are the challenges? Because many times it's difficult to, to get to use these tools or to adapt to the, your systems to the new paradigm. So here I would like to express for these four points that actually is what people come across when they start using AI. So it is difficult to collect data. So as we, as we see in these days, data is the main component. Data is usually quite difficult to collect because you need to go on the wild and manually collect all this data or you need to buy it. And buy data is quite expensive nowadays. So here is why companies like Google and Facebook are uh, overcoming or are leading this, this market because they have all the data from all of us. So that's what we call the data wall. If you don't have enough data, then it's quite difficult to train your models and create a new solution. Then once we have the data, we need to expertise to train these AI models. So it's not a straightforward, even though there's some more tools nowadays, to adapt your, your data, your models to a specific use case. Even though you can do that, then there's some expensive tools for deploy. You can deploy your models in the cloud, just through some services like Amazon, or you can deploy on the edge. It's like you try to deploy your systems or your, your solutions on small devices like your mobile phone or even your fridge or your any other element, electronic element you may have at hand. And finally, this is a long and costly iterative process to solve the issues and overcome the barriers that I was mentioning previously. Because sometimes when you deploy, uh, when you finally deploy your AI models on, the, on your systems, then you realize they don't work as effective. You need to come back, collect more data, train it better. So it's quite a long iterative process that is really costly and takes a lot of time. So given these challenges, the idea that we are proposing in the European projects that Isabella was mentioning before is how do we solve this? So here's where Bonsai uh, comes in. So I'm, I'm working for Bonsai, which is an association that was created uh, after the previous European project. And we, what we are trying is to build this uh, marketplace that is vendor agnostic, is modular and provides services for experimentation model compression, optimization, benchmarking, deployment, and security. So the idea is to provide or to allow the startups, SMEs, to access this marketplace. Because through the marketplace, we can, um, we can put in touch or we can collaborate with the different institutes, researchers, companies, providers to create or to have this end-to-end -end workflow. 
So the workflows, as, as previously said, we come from the data to the knowledge of training algorithms, then deployment and on the tooling. And what we do is to put in touch all these people so that if someone with data wants to come and say, I provide this data for some people that want to use it, this, it's going to be useful for them. Then a researcher may come and say, I don't know anything about deployment, but I'm an expert in training. Okay, So I can, I can take that data and actually train a model. Then maybe another provider that is coming from the from the hardware perspective is going to come with a platform and say, I would like to have some deployed uh, solutions in my hardware. So all these blocks, these independent blocks, and through the marketplace, we can connect them and actually create use cases. And that's what we do at the moment. And we have four different use cases for healthcare, automotive, manufacturing, and robotics. And this is the workflow that we, we created for the first open calling bonds apps. So someone is defining the challenge. Usually is a, he is an innovator or an SME that you may know. So the idea is to define a challenge, uh, sort of a problem that you would like to solve with AI. And we put this in the marketplace and then some uh, AI talents, what we call AI talents, which are usually uh, developers or data scientists, are gonna try to solve this challenge by creating AI assets, AI solutions. And they do so by accessing the service layer of the bonds apps or the stairway projects in this case. And finally, there's an integrator that will integrate these solutions within the companies or the SMEs or any other um, user that want to use this AI. And the process is uh, we do this through some support. So we have a lot of support from, from the bonds apps community or the bonds apps community. We provide uh, tools for that and also we provide some mentoring. So we have a weekly course of mentoring where we are analyzing the problems of the of these AI talents or these specifications from the SMEs. And we try to work around all these issues and provide these end-to-end -end workflows so that we can finally provide some more solutions for the SMEs and, and sort of to allow them to get into the market much more easily. So that's a little bit the the, <clears throat> the talk I, I wanted to give, just an overview of uh, the, the use cases and how we try to address those issues for SMEs and startups. Thank you so much, you Miguel. Much. That was very clear. So that was from the technology offering. Now we would like to have the participation of one of our beneficiaries. And for that, we have invited Svetla Boitseva. Okay, Svetla is senior research lead at uh, senior research lead at Ontotex, and she is one of the beneficiaries of the AI for EU supporting program. And she will tell us about the benefits, especially putting the focus on the business part of a company. This will give you really some inspiration for you as digital innovation hubs to promote these open calls and to explain the companies that, you know, they will also gain from this part, okay, which is always very, very relevant for, for them. So welcome, Svetla, and floor is yours. Thank you. Can, Hello, my... uh, can you see my screen? Not now. Now, yes, yeah. and we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hello. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to, to make this presentation. My name is Svetla Bojceva from Sirma AI Trading as uh, I'm going to present what companies can gain uh, from business perspective. Our company was a beneficiary uh, of uh, AI for EU program last year, and I'm happy uh, to share our experience uh, with uh, the program and uh, uh, with uh, the support uh, that uh, we had, uh, both financial and uh, uh, technical and business support. And the uh, process uh, for uh, uh, submission of proposals uh, was really intuitive and simple. There were a lot of uh, challenges uh, for various uh, industrial sectors and uh, uh, after you select the uh, uh, challenge, uh, you have uh, a simple questionnaire with a really simple uh, navigation uh, to answer questions uh, for the proposed uh, technical solution, the impact of the solution, uh, and uh, uh, your uh, plans uh, for further exploitation. Um, this uh, process uh, is uh, 
relatively simple and uh, you don't need uh, uh, to search uh, for collaborators uh, and uh, other organizations uh, uh, to um, create a consortium to submit a proposal. You can uh, individually submit a proposal and uh, the feedback uh, uh, and evaluation process uh, is relatively short. Uh, you receive a lump sum for your solution uh, as a financial support and uh, the process uh, for reporting and delivering the solution is uh, also simplified. Uh, when we applied uh, uh, as beneficiary, uh, as a solution provider, there were um, several uh, industrial sectors and uh, a lot of challenges. Uh, uh, here you can see from the AI4EU program uh, some of the uh, sectors uh, we applied uh, for the healthcare solution for the challenge identification of colon cancer risk factors and we proposed a solution to classify oncology diseases uh, for Spanish language. The duration uh, for um, delivering the solution was uh, six months and we received financial support of uh, uh, 70,000 uh, euro. Uh, the developed solution at the end uh, was uh, in technology readiness level seven and uh, we provided a solution uh, using deep learning technologies. Uh, the financial and support program uh, provided to us uh, support training and mentoring, uh, both uh, technical and business mentoring. Uh, and uh, the business mentoring uh, actually helped us uh, to identify for their financial and exploitation opportunities. So we also had uh, an opportunity uh, to be part of a large ecosystem and to access to the new technologies. Uh, the AI for EU uh, experimental platform gives an access uh, to advanced AI technologies and uh, the SMEs and startups uh, don't uh, need uh, to have um, a large uh, technical staff uh, and uh, uh, even low tech uh, companies uh, uh, can easily uh, adapt uh, the provided um, uh, AI technologies uh, for their valuable solutions. Uh, um, uh, all beneficiaries have an opportunity to experiment uh, with them in an intuitive uh, way and uh, to develop uh, pipelines uh, and services with the latest uh, technologies. Uh, um, the uh, companies have uh, an opportunity to develop their own product and services uh, and uh, uh, to use different licensing uh, schemes uh, for uh, dealing with the intellectual property rights, uh, uh, depending on their future plans uh, for exploitation. And um, uh, of course, uh, all the uh, beneficiaries uh, have the potential to increase their competitiveness. Uh, the technical mentoring uh, program actually uh, helped us uh, uh, in requirement analysis to define key performance indicators and milestones uh, for implementation of our solution, uh, to create individual plan uh, for the implementation and to identify key technologies uh, for our solution and uh, provided uh, valuable information and feedback uh, uh, during uh, the overall uh, program to improve the solution. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, we actually um, developed a deep learning uh, solution, which was based on already existing technologies, which uh, we adapted and customized uh, for the uh, specified challenge. And uh, uh, here you can see a sample um, uh, demo uh, for our solution, which was uh, related to medical coding uh, of uh, diseases uh, uh, from uh, uh, clinical documents in Spanish. 
The application of medical coding is really uh, uh, wide. Uh, it can be used in healthcare as an assistance tool for clinical documentation in a research to identify risk factors and uh, diagnostic associations and data science uh, for integration of heterogeneous data that will allow uh, the study of more in-depth insights into medicine. SMEs uh, and business uh, opportunities uh, uh, are uh, um, really uh, 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 increasing uh, with uh, this uh, program. Uh, uh, SMEs can improve the technology readiness level of their products uh, uh, using the support of the program, experiment with the newest uh, AI technologies. They also have an opportunity to test and validate their solutions with real data and in real environment uh, because usually the data are provided by the challenge holder and uh, the access to real data and real environment uh, is really important uh, uh, for validation of the uh, solutions. Uh, and also uh, uh, this program uh, allows to communicate with experts uh, which are use case providers and challenge owners. The business monitoring plan was uh, really, really helpful uh, for us uh, uh, during the program. We had uh, um, one of the top experts uh, in the industry as a business monitoring. And uh, 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 this uh, program allowed us uh, to define individual business plan uh, for the developed uh, solution, uh, to uh, define business canvas, exploitation plan, uh, to uh, prepare SWOT analysis for our solution, to promote uh, the developed solution on different um, venues, uh, business to business forums uh, and uh, um, other uh, dissemination activities. Uh, to discover new customers and to identify potential partners uh, uh, for further exploitation and um, uh, further improvement uh, and um, uh, extension of our solution. Um, we also had the chance, uh, uh, thanks uh, to AI for EU program, uh, to be part of a large ecosystem of uh, uh, AI uh, uh, stakeholders. Uh, uh, the program actually uh, has a lot of uh, video training uh, and other training and educational materials. Uh, it allows knowledge transfer because uh, um, we had a chance uh, to communicate also with uh, uh, large industrial and uh, research organizations, uh, networking uh, with uh, different uh, players in the AI ecosystem to participate on several events uh, where uh, we uh, can uh, present uh, our solution. And uh, also uh, AI for EU platform uh, provides um, a marketplace where we can promote and present uh, our solutions and to allow uh, potential stakeholders uh, to test them, um, to see uh, the documentation, uh, the technical solution, and also uh, we can also explore other uh, relevant solutions uh, and uh, uh, to have uh, a potential uh, communication for further cooperation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Svetla, for this nice presentation. Please wait with us for the questions at the end of, of the session, should we have some of them. <coughs> now we go to one of your peers. So we have invited one digital innovation hub that is represented today by Sergio Mayo. Sergio Mayo is an strategic innovation, is part of the strategic innovation team at Ita Innova. And Ita Innova is part of the Aragon DIH in Spain. So we would like to hear today, Sergio, what is your experience, right? Working with Cascade Funding and informing SMEs and also supporting them in having access to this mechanism. So please go ahead and the Okay, thank you, Maite. I'm going to share my screen. 
just to be sure that you see it. Yes, yes, we can see it and we can hear you. Okay, thank you. There's some background noise. Yes, but I'm afraid it's not me. I'm, okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So uh, thank you, Maite. Uh, thank you for, for this opportunity to, to share my experience as, as a member of uh, Aragon DIH. As you said, this is a, a different view that, than the others, uh, other presenters of this workshop. So um, I want to share you how we face this type of uh, funding, uh, how from, from Aragon DIH help our, our ecosystem to, to take advantage of this, of this type of projects. First of all, Sorry. Oops. It's wrong to move this slide. If I don't know what's happening, can I move this slide? Let me ask my colleague Laura to prepare your presentation if we need to move it on our side. Do you, do you prefer me to share my screen? I will. Now we now cannot. We can... Okay, let's do something, Sergio. You maybe on the at the left do you have your microphone i think you may you might be mute yeah okay so you can move i, I will share my screen okay okay thank you thank you Thank you, thank you, Laura. I'm sorry for this. I don't know, I don't know why I couldn't uh, pass to the next slide. Okay, so please go for, to the next slide, please, because uh, I will chat. I will, I will hurry up. Okay, uh, in, this, in the next slide, please. Um, this is uh, who we are. Please, Laura, could you please move to the next slide? Okay, yes. No, no. Well, yeah, maybe. Okay, yes, I will go faster than expected. Um, this is uh, how, we, how we face uh, practice funding from, from our own DIH. Of course, if you are at DIH, uh, you are more than tired of seeing this, this uh, left part of the slide. The, the support portfolio that uh, DIH is supposed to, to, to give to the ecosystem, to their SMEs, but it is really, really linked to the Cascade Funding Scheme, as Maite said at the beginning of the, of the webinar. Uh, the IH, uh, firstly, must know, foster and work with the regional ecosystem uh, and be prepared and position it for, for opportunities that fit your regional goals. What this means, that uh, it, this means that uh, the DIHs uh, should uh, prepare a portfolio of services and a portfolio of um, of uh, possible projects to be involved in, depending on the regional strategy, and also depending on, on what are their capabilities and, and what the, the SMEs of the of the region are expecting from them. Of course, as uh, already said in, 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 in former presentations, Cascade funding is not only financial support for experimental pilots. Uh, mm, also, many open calls include mentoring and training uh, programs, and maybe if you are uh, the IJH are not that inter so so interested in, in this type of support, but for sure your ecosystem and your SMEs, at least in, in our experience, uh, are really really interested in, in this type of support. Not only the, the financial support for for test before in pilots or, or experiments, but also the skills and training that they have they can receive from from the open calls and and from other dihs than than yours 
because they, they they also open their mind and they also give them contacts to 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 evolve their their pilots and their use cases. And also, you as a DIH should uh, uh, promote or, or should encourage your SMEs to establish links with with the with the projects with other DIHs, other SMEs beyond the end of the of the experiment, because this is the the key part of the of the on this type of projects to establish uh, permanent links and to let your your SMEs be me more more European ones than than only um, using your, your services your regional services. So next slide, please. Next one. Yes. So uh, regarding cascade funding, uh, uh, we are helping SMEs in, in a three steps uh, scheme, which is this one. The first one, uh, the first step is the awareness and goals. Uh, we here, we look up at uh, the regional capabilities and needs, both from the DIH part and, and from the SMEs, uh, from the SMEs capabilities and needs as well. And we define the strategy of the of the of the DIH. In that way, we 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 can plan the services and the marketplace that we are offering both to the SMEs and to the and to the different cascade funding projects. So that way, we are really aligned with the regional reality and with the with the SMEs that are supposed to to apply to the cascade funding projects. In a more mature step. Second step, you as a DIH uh, should be really excellent or really expert in a technological uh, uh, field. That way, you will be able to be in, in the European initiatives and platforms, and and to be strong in that uh, projects, key projects, platforms, uh, and other initiatives at the European level that will lead you uh, to encourage your SMEs to be part of, of this uh, bigger ecosystem. And also to be aligned with your regional reality, because uh, maybe your regional, your regional strategy in innovation or in technology is not very focused in, in several uh, key issues of the of the programs. So you should uh, pivot to another programs or another project to be really aligned with with your region. And finally, the the, the more mature uh, step is the one for for that encourage for alliance. So if you are strong in Europe in, in, in several platforms, you will have a, a position in a technological field. It will be easier for you as a DNH to be part of corridors of core projects and to establish agreements with other DIHs or other institutions in order to be able to share services or and activities with them. And that way, your 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 regional, your local local SMEs will be able to to be uh, at the top of the of the consumers of services at, at European level. So, with this three steps scheme, now I'm going to share with you three different uh, uh, cases where we where we were able to help SMEs to 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 be in cascade funding. The step one uh, regarding awareness and goals, uh, it's very general. It's not really focused on, on a specific technology like, like this one, like artificial intelligence, which is the one we are talking about today. This is more general. You be, uh, first, you have to be aware of your regional capabilities, as I said. And you here see our, our DIH name or definition. We are focused on cognitive systems in artificial intelligence and also in HPC, and for the needs of the region, which are really smart manufacturing processes, robotics, and logistics. With this uh, definition and, and, and vision, we are uh, making awareness and focusing in our ecosystem. And at the right side, you see different type of, of members of our DIH, which are public administrations, clusters, incubators, chambers of commerce. Uh, also, we are involved with the European Enterprise European Network, uh, uh, development agencies, uh, RTOs, uh, academia, and of course, uh, a big part of SMEs, which are the ones that are demanding from us uh, what type of services 
what type of uh, task funding uh, projects they are more, more interested in. And finally, with this vision and this focus, we are able to define a, a set of services, a, a marketplace of the DIH, which are the ones that the SMEs are going to use and which are the ones also that we are going to, to use to, to help them to apply to cascade funding projects. So with this general scheme, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we are uh, the success case. Uh, we we helped uh, a local SME in, in the IJS world uh, first open, open call. This is totally general uh, cascade funding project, the IH world. It is not focused on AI, nor data, nor specific technology, and neither is focused in a specific sector. So this is very general uh, cascade funding scheme. So we, as the Aragon DIH, with two of, of our founders, the University of Zaragoza and Instituto Aragon de Fomento, we were able to, to develop a set of services, support before investment <laughs> services and test before invest services to help uh, this, this SME uh, to apply to this, uh, to this uh, open call. And finally, uh, we got this, this funding, 90, 94,000 euros for the IJT services and SME budget for six months projects. Also, this has been chosen as best practices of the, of the project, of the program of, of the IH world. And what I want to, um, to remark, to, to point out at this stage, is that uh, our SME COFA, thanks to this project, not only uh, got the funding, of course, and, and was able to develop the, the pilot, but uh, they also were able to get in touch with, with other DIHs and, and other SMEs of the, of the program. And we were chosen as a best practice. And the next step is, is going to be new, to define new, uh, new use cases for maybe the next open call. Well, this is the, the second step. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. Uh, this is the second step of the of the of the scheme for helping uh, SMEs in cascade funding is to be really positioned in your in, in Europe in your technology um, uh, focus. So we are in, in, in we are really focused in data and artificial intelligence. So uh, in order to be excellent, we are we are. In, in BTVA, in BTVA from, from many years ago, we are gold eye space, and also our technicians are, are part of the fireware uh, program uh, experts, uh, uh, fireware foundation uh, uh, program experts. So, with this, uh, with these two uh, really big platforms in, in Europe regarding data and artificial intelligence, we were aligned with our regional reality in, in the industrial sector. And we were part in, 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 in other platforms, other projects that are launching uh, cascade funding. For instance, i for trust So we are ambassadors of i for trust And that way, with our uh, strengths in, in data and, and in artificial intelligence, we, might, we can make awareness of our regional ecosystem of different uh, other different cascade funding projects uh, more focused in, in in this case in, in artificial intelligence so in next slide you will be able to see the the this as a success case we helped a uh, regional uh, our regional uh, sme capillar it in in a in a need they 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 were requiring us they are they are strong in in rural logistics but they they demanded from us to have a um, set of uh, companies to test their solution so we help them uh, to 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 create a construction to create a set of uh, smes from maybe mainly from from belgium and also from france to test their solution and we help them to to develop new new algorithms for for the data and to be able to to make uh, prospections and to be able to to discover patterns of the users of this uh, this um, uh, solution they already had. So this is a, a bigger project. This is a an eight partner consortium with a one hundred and twenty thousand euro budget to be developed in nine months. And also as as before. Uh, we help them with our services. We help them uh, to create the consortium, but also 
new use cases new, new use cases are arising during the project. So now this this regional SME is directly in touch with these other uh, users of their solutions in Belgium and in France. And that way, they, as we say, they can fly alone without uh, uh, our help uh, uh, to be able to to develop new 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 solutions with uh, with the starting help of a of an open call like the one from from my forecast. And finally, and uh, slide please, the third and and more mature uh, type of help that we can support uh, our regional ecosystem of SMEs. Is alliance. You, you, as you see, we we, we are in, in several networks of of, of projects like a for trust or I for uh, for you. Uh, we are not uh, indeed partners, but we are members of the networks or five for trust and I for you. And as you saw before, uh, we were able to apply with our SMEs to this to these projects, but. We are really partners in these next uh, three projects or initiatives, VDBA, EU Hubs for Data, and IIX. What it means? Uh, it means that the, with this positioning, we are not only able to help uh, SMEs in reaching uh, funding in cascade funding projects that are existing out of our ecosystem, but we bring to our ecosystem these, these initiatives, these projects. This way, we are able to share services with other DIHs, with other institutions, and to help our SMEs to, to not only to apply, to be really in the network, to be really in the network, and to be able to, to take advantage not only from our Aragon DIH services, not only from other DIH services, but also from the network itself, from training, from uh, applying to bigger projects uh, and, and many other opportunities that in the step one are and step two, they are not able to take advantage because they are not indeed part of the network. They are just applying. So if you are at the NIH are really strong in, in, a, in a technological field, it is key that you are really positioned in corridors, in core associations, in core projects, in core initiatives in, in Europe to be able to involve your SMEs beyond just uh, cascade funding. And uh, with the next slide, please. This is just uh, 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 the case of you have for data where we are, where we are partners. Uh, we have more than 2,000, uh, well, well 210,000 uh, um, uh, euros to be used providing services to SMEs in the project open calls not only for our regional SMEs, but for uh, all over Europe SMEs. Which, what this means? This means that also you are encouraging your SMEs, your regional ecosystem to be excellent because they need to compete, not at regional level, but at European level. And trust me, this is, this is really good for your ecosystem. It is really good that, that, that your SMEs are aware that they are not competing locally, but uh, at the European level. And additionally, this, this, this project where we are partners has more than 2.5 million euros to directly support SMEs participating in selected experiments. For instance, in, in the first open call, we supported three SMEs in three experiments, and these three SMEs, only one of them was a regional one, was a known one for, for us. The other ones from, from, were from, from, from France and from, from, from Italy. So each, each SME was funded with uh, 60,000 uh, 60, euros and around 70,000 euros in services from different DIHs. What this means? This means that uh, they get uh, more, let's say, funding, more, more support in services than in, in real funds. Uh, this is key for, from our point of view for, for SMEs because they, they are not really applying only for the budget only for the other type of support like uh, training and, and support and, and mentoring and so on but they are really applying at the end to be in touch for with, with different DIHs with different RTOs because these 70,000 euros in services are uh, are allowing them 
to be in touch with uh, cutting edge technology and with uh, with really leaders in Europe regarding data and artificial intelligence. So this is a uh, from our point of view, this is the, the most important uh, point to apply to this to these uh, projects. And finally, uh, this is the uh, last slide. The, the, uh, the you can see here in this link the experiments that we that were approved in, in the first open call. And um, this is will help companies not only financial support from the open call, but to be a, a part of the federated services from the top uh, future European Federation of Data. And, and, and this is key because the, uh, at the end, the, the, the SMEs not only get the contacts, the funding, the support, the training, but they are involved, as I told you before, in the network. They are now involved in the federated services uh, uh, network of data of the uh, Future European Federation of, of uh, the agencies specialized in data. So at the end of the day, uh, the, the SMEs that really, really want to, to, to internationalize, internationalize internationalized uh, they they do not want only the funding only the support from the IHs only the, the the training and skills they want to be part of the network and that way we we are really helping them to to be to be part of these European networks and I think this is all from my side I'm sorry for for the for the problems in at the beginning of the presentation well this is summing up I, I don't have if I have uh, time enough to sum up or, or not, but uh, again, um, Laura, I have to. Uh, do I have time to to do a sum up of, of my presentation or, or not? I well, if I may, I Sergio, we have some time now for the the questions from the audience. Okay. So no problem. No problem. Yeah. Now, thank you so much, Sergio, for your presentation. I think it was a very nice uh, wrap up of our message today, right? What we really wanted to translate to the audience on how the cash funding is an important mechanism that prepared the companies that you are supporting as an entity in having access to funding, okay? But also having access to other kind of services that help them to, to grow by this test before invest, by this access to the to the business mentoring also, how Svetla was presenting, the technical uh, knowledge, the technical access to mentors, okay, that Miguel was presenting but also how these opportunities uh, help the company to internationalize. And that was also an important point in your presentation, Sergio. And also helping the DIH itself, right? Because in helping the company, in connecting them with those networks, okay? And also as, as partner in some of the projects, the DIH is also growing, of course, right? So I think it was uh, a very good and inspirational uh, presentation all the cases okay and i hope you also found this point in in all of them so we have now five minutes for the questions before finalizing our webinar if you still have other questions please include them in the chat i have seen uh, one question regarding the presentations that were shared today these presentations will all be shared in the ai community that we have created at funding box uh, right after this webinar you will receive an email in your inbox with the direct access to this community and there you will find all these presentations and regarding the next question that i think uh, can go to either isa or miguel please feel free to to answer okay uh, i have a question regarding the service providers i'm representing a startup offering ml OPS services in this type of service the added value is focusing more on the implementation and less as on the computational resources my question is in which call should my startup apply as a provider and on which criteria the submission will be evaluated i don't know isa if you want to go with it please Mm -hmm. Yes, I can take this one. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, so for the technology providers, there are, I would say, at least from the from the funding opportunities that I presented today that are available, I would say there are two ways. Um, the one uh, from the ICT49 part, 
uh, you can become because you saw that there is a lot of focus of course on the adopters and so and users i guess that's why also the question but still you can be engaged as the supplier okay so we have at least one joint expression of interest between starway and bonsaps projects where you just register we validate your competences and then you can start providing services and also if you have any technology to be developed to to the SMEs, to these adopter SMEs that will support. Then um, also from the ICT49, um, the I Energy project, the last one, uh, that is if your innovation is can be applied to, to the energy energy sector, then there you can apply as the tech provider together with the end users. So you have to find uh, the partner to the consortium but they're actually we're looking also for innovators so your solution uh, if it's applicable to energy you can apply there and then outside of the ICT 49 I also mentioned kit for SME as far as I remember they're also looking for the tech providers we're not involved there so I advise you to go to the website but I think uh, that could be also within your interest and I'm not sure if Miguel has anything to add uh, on that but I'll record your point I think it's been great, yes. Okay. okay, then thank you both. Um, if we have no more questions, I maybe have one for Svetla before uh, using this uh, one minute because I'm really curious to know where you are with this pilot uh, today, Svetla. I mean, uh, is my maybe almost ready to be commercialized? or you are still in a phase where you need more funding support to go ahead with the pending TRLs? What happened after the pilot with A for M, uh, AI for you? Uh, uh, thank you for this question. Uh, actually, uh, our solution uh, was commercialized. Uh, it uh, is uh, uh, already finalized, and uh, we uh, were actually uh, uh, connected uh, to several stakeholders uh, who was uh, interested in uh, investment uh, in this solution, which means uh, uh, we were successful in the uh, development of this solution, which is beyond of the current state of the art uh, technologies. And uh, we uh, currently had uh, several communications with potential uh, end users uh, who would like to invest. Okay, that's superb. So we are not talking here about just another European project, but really the possibility to commercialize your product and, and we boost that. Thank you. That's very, very important to, to hear that. Um, maybe one question for Miguel. Um, what does the technical support provided by Bonas included exactly? Thank you for the question. So we have a, a program where uh, some of the platform of bond size is, as I said, connecting these different entities, uh, actors on the AI tool chain from the data provider to the, to the deployment itself. So we have a collection of workflows that allows the user to perform the training and the deployment. And these workflows provide as well tools. We have tools for all that. And it's very flexible in a way that the users can adapt these tools for the use case. So we have sort of a, a wrapper that collects or takes what is available in the market and the users can adapt these specific tools to their use case. And the way that we, we have planned this in the, in the open calls is by providing support and we weekly calls with them. We have uh, experimenting, we have been experimenting all these use cases uh, during the open call and we, we realized that um, it's actually quite flexible and people are interested in using these tools because they can reuse it for many other problems. The, the key idea of this, of this program is portability and reusability because it's not good to use just one tool for every different problem. We should have a centralized way of uh, reusing uh, all, all, the available, all the available tools and platforms. So that's a key element. And then we provide the support since we are providing the tools in a weekly call basis and then also in workshops that we have with them more specifically. Okay, thank you, Miguel. Uh, last question. Um, when is the deadline to apply to calls for AI, AI experts in a stairway and bone apps project? Uh, maybe this is more for you, Isabella? I guess so. Thank you. Yes, the deadline, well, there are cut-off dates, so it is continuously open uh, online form. 
Okay, the key thing to understand is that those, if you get validated, you will be engaged during the support program. So first one will be in Starway. I believe it will start quite soon. So that is why, well, the first tranche will, will go there. But then also the Monsap's second open call, uh, well, the, the SMEs will be, uh, will need your support in 2023. So it's actually like this validation is open constantly, but you're engaged in, well, if you're validated in different times. So, but the first step is to apply and it's open until next year, 2000, in March, 2023. Okay, so it's very long time to apply, but there are specific dates to get, that when you will be selected and matched with the SME. Okay, so, but all the details, of course, are in the guidelines on the on this online form. So, we invite you also to check all the details there. Okay, thank you so much. Well, I think with uh, this we we stole this this stop this overview, and yeah, I just uh, will tell you goodbye. But before we close the the session, I would like to give you again the floor, Lisa, so for you to share with our colleagues the final indications on the next webinars and so on. So thank you all. Perfect. Thank you, Maite, for in this part and for all the speakers for your time. Um, so just to wrap, well, wrap up or to summarize, uh, as you know, well, at the beginning we'll also send you the follow-up emails so you can join the next webinar if you're interested. That will be focused on actual tips on how to write the winning proposals and that will help you actually in case your SMEs uh, will need help in that. So we'll give you more details about that and also how the funding can be used. So I believe this is a very good follow-up to these introductions we made today. And uh, we also would like to be engaged more with you, so that is why we would like to ask you for help okay, in defining um, the priorities for the, for, the open, for the next open call, especially in Bonsap's project, for which you can also get certified if you actually fill out this survey. So there's, there's a few questions, the 10 minute very short survey, where we ask you about your challenges as Digital Innovation Hub, but also if you can tell us what are the changes from your ecosystem, the SMEs and the industry, and that way we'll be able to actually make the open calls even more adjusted to the, to the real needs of the real market. And here's the QR code, and I believe Laura has also sent in the chat the survey, so please uh, take your time and also to share your opinion with us. And that's it for today. Uh, for those of you who want to join us in the next webinar, it's 20th April at 10 a.m. So we hope to see you there as the continuation. Thank you for your time. Goodbye.